now your host, show writer and purveyor of all things haunt, Jeff Tucker. Halloween event of all time, not Scary Farm, there it is! Alright, ladies and gentlemen, Not Scary Farm is not only, we not only invented the theme park Halloween event, we also perfected it. With original scares that can't be found anywhere else, Not Scary Farm is the ultimate Halloween experience unlike any other. You see, Scary Farm isn't just mazes and monsters, it's more than that. In fact, the best way to describe it is to say that the entire park is the attraction. Every inch of Knott's Berry Farm is transformed into Knott's Scary Farm. No cobweb is left unhung, no strobe light left unblinked. Once you enter the gates, there is seriously nowhere to hide from the terror. Nowhere to hide from the terror. <laughs> And this year we're transforming Not Scary Farm like never before, making it a completely immersive experience from the moment you walk through the gates until you leave terrified hours later. Today, as a thank you to the most amazing fans in the world here at Midsummer Scream, we're going to take an in-depth look at what makes our park so immersive and reveal something brand new for 2018. Are you still with me? I love it. All right, I want to welcome our panel. Please welcome the Vice President of Entertainment, Ken Parks. <laughs> Producer extraordinaire, Eric Nix. <laughs> Scenic designer, Gus Kruger. <laughs> Scenic designer, Daniel Miller. and costume designer to the stars, Tim Barham. All right, these folks up here you see represent uh, just a small portion of the massive team that helps put on Not Scary Farm every year. Thank you for joining us today and allowing us to take a deep dive into what makes Not Scary Farm so unique, everybody. All right, we're gonna start with you, Ken, as the Vice President of Entertainment. Uh, why do we say that Not Scary Farm is such an immersive experience, and what does that mean? Hey, before we do that, I just want to thank our monsters. Uh, so thank you to all of our monsters. Uh, do we have any monsters in the crowd today? Uh, we love you guys. So, uh, I mean, they really are the major part of what makes our event so awesome. Uh, why we call it an immersive event? Well, um, for us it's really a commitment to kind of what you said in your introduction, that we, we want our park to be uh, this theme park attraction that stands alone. And what I mean by that is that the entire park becomes the attraction. We want to get away from the idea that we're just somehow a theme park that has haunted mazes or attractions. We want every inch of our park to be something that you can discover and that some, uh, that's something that can be terrifying uh, and to be just really an awesome, cool experience. Um, I went to, uh, my first haunt was in 1984 and that's kind of the great thing about this uh, panel uh, and the folks who work for us. Almost everybody uh, uh, started as a fan. And Let's go down the line. Sure. I, I went first in 88. All right. 80, 80, 96. Yeah. Gus? 2000. Get out. Yeah. <laughs> Been a great panel, guys. <laughs> Daniel? 82. 82. <laughs> Tim? Uh, 91. I'm not from here, so my first time was when I went. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know about it. Then I came. You still beat Gus by nine years, so. <laughs> it's even worse. I never came as a fan. I worked my first year, so I didn't go to Knott's. So you were a monster. Yeah. Let's hear it for the monsters, everybody. So, 
Take us to 1984, Ken. Well, in 1984, I had no idea uh, what I was about to walk into. And you have to remember that that uh, was a time where there was no internet. So there was no possibility of watching a walkthrough video. There was no possibility of seeing snaps of what the, the event was. It basically was a radio commercial that said, hey, Wolfman Jack is going to be Jack. at this uh, <laughs> event, and it's the greatest Halloween party ever, right? Which I'm not so sure that why Wolfman Jack was the pull for me to get me there, but that's okay. I went, and I was blown away by what it was. Uh, you know, the, the spider webs all over Ghost Town, the Howling Wind soundtrack, the skull up on... Uh, big uh, on the on timber mountain and so you know for us as fans we want to get back to those kind of things last year you saw us as we keep pushing this idea of total immersion you saw that the return of the the cobwebs came back to ghost town you saw the skull back up on timber mountain but we and we want to keep heading in that direction but we also don't want to live in a place where we're just recreating the past we also want to keep moving forward you know not as always been uh, an innovator you know it's where it all started and so we want to keep looking you know we've been doing a lot of uh, work on alternate storytelling with our ghost town alive event and and we want to bring keep bringing that total immersion idea into haunt as well right you were talking about where it all began and haunt really began right in the heart of ghost town that was where the event began it's where the streets began it's where a lot of history is eric you want to talk about that yeah i bet a lot of people in this uh, crowd know how it started but in 1973 walter not basically decided to go all in on a halloween event and uh what he did was he handed out a few planet of the apes masks to some uh, some of his associates um he uh, we're bringing those back all right <laughs> Stacked a few people inside the blind ride and hung up some cobwebs, like uh, Ken mentioned, and Scary Farm was born. And uh, really, it was out of necessity because uh, the fall was a, a kind of a slow time for the park. So he's looking for a way to attract more guests. And really, what I what I like to to remember is that you know that first year, 1973, that was a three night event, uh, and all themed uh, theme park. Halloween events can kind of trace their roots back to Not Scary Farm from those uh, initial three nights. And back then it was only, you know, we had monsters inside the Pekins and then they were eventually unleashed on the crowds and the art of the scare was born. The first year they were locked in the Pekins. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, that didn't, right time, didn't last yeah, too long, long. right? <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, then they, they uh, broke out, essentially, the peak ends, and then uh, unleashed on the world, and the uh, sliding was invented in Ghost Town as well. Uh, and I, I have to have to think that we're doing pretty well, because this is our 46th year. Uh, 46, <laughs> yes. And as you see that, you see that picture there in the top corner, those are the apes there. You can see them walking. And right below, that's John Waite decorating the mine ride. There's the witch from the first hanging. And then there's Seymour, the host of the first scary farm. So anyway, okay, so last year we introduced a whole new uh, element to the scare zones. Uh, they were called atmosphere characters. Atmosphere characters. They were a bit hit. Can you want to tell us what's an atmosphere character? Well, uh, you know, uh, what, what I love about uh, Knott's, I'm not a big fan of promising things or, or uh, spoon-feeding the audience. I want, the, I, I want our guests to discover uh, and have these Easter eggs that are around every single corner, right? Uh, and so we kind of leaned into that. I had a story that happened to me back in uh, 1984 that sold me on the idea of finding things within Haunt. I uh, was walking through a near wilderness dance hall, and it was just me, and it was covered in fog. I mean, it was so thick, and I heard this metal scraping the cement, just boom, and then this scrape that would happen, and it just kept going, and it was coming towards me, and I thought, oh my God, what have I walked into? I was terrified, and then the fog sort of started to dissipate, and I could see it was Freddy Krueger. And I thought, oh God, he's coming for me. And then I, but the metal just kept hitting the ground and scraping. And I thought, oh God, what, what could, I mean, I was terrified. And then the fog sort of lifted more and I saw that, uh, that the scraping and the boom was really, he was a sweeper dressed as Freddy Krueger and it was his pan and his broom. <laughs> You know, Freddy Krueger is a janitor, so... <laughs> Maybe. Who knows? Uh, 
But I gotta tell you, that was one of those moments for me that was like, okay, this is what's so cool about this, that at any point I could walk around a corner and have that kind of experience, and I'm the only person that had that experience, or that was so, I was, I was the only person in that unique moment. So, looking at that, we wanted to take, um, we have all of these, like we've said, we have all of these fantastic monsters. We also wanted to kind of create, uh, you know, people that would be sort of these characters that as you turned a corner there would be this image to sort of do placemaking, right? As if there's this whole other life that's going on at Not Scary Farm. So last year we added uh, Engine 41. We had never had Engine 41 in a part of the mix of the decor. And we put a conductor out there. Uh, and then we had a grave digger that's in the graveyard digging away. And we had various uh, atmosphere characters around the area. And the kind of the fun thing about it is that, you know, they are, uh, they become a photo opportunity, but we don't want them to just be that. We want to kind of dig into them deeper and have the experience be even richer. So we gave each of those atmosphere characters a task that they had to complete by the end of the evening that was built into their character. So there's the picture of the, the conductor. And uh, the conductor, if you saw him last year, the conductor is really in, 19, uh, he's in the 1800s. So he's in 1886, but he hears all the voices of the guests. And so his goal in the evening is to try at some point to reach out and make connection through that void to connect to the guests that are in 2018. And so that's why if you had any sort of interaction with him, you know, you could see him looking past you or trying to reach out to you. And um, I think that really helps add to the immersion of the park. And so we're going to do more of that. I can't tell you exactly what we're doing with that, but I would say that um, I would look around the saloon area this year for something pretty awesome. Okay. okay. There, there's a hint. I guess. Well, you, you, you and I were talking, and for, for a lot of us, I don't know about you guys, but Halloween's better than Christmas for me, right? And as, as great as Christmas, oh, Christmas is great, it's great, but you don't want to know what all your presents are. The joy is, oh my God, this is exactly what I wanted, or Aunt Shirley bought me that. But, so the idea was to come to the park and discover and open those Halloween gifts on your own, right? So you don't want to know everything. Absolutely. I mean, that's a, for me, that's a, a, a much more fun and exciting experience. If I had no expectation and I stumble upon it and I discover it myself, I think that's a far richer experience. Absolutely. So, Tim, you want to talk about these atmosphere characters? Because obviously, they're a lot more detailed. They're, what did you, what did you call it? 360? Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> um, for me as a customer, what we wanted to do is most of our monsters, we tried to make them really dark and scary so that they can hide. With the Atmo, we wanted them out and present, so I took a different approach and I wanted to make the costumes a little brighter, a little more approachable, so no blood, no distress, no gore, because we want you to invite you into that person. We want you to have a moment with them. We also did a lot more detail. Um, part of these guys were also about making sure that they're 360 because you're going to interact with them and you're not being scared and run off. They're going to tell you the story, so they're going to add to you. So we really wanted to make sure that there's little trinkets and little moments. So while you're out there and you discover them, look for those little moments on their costumes. They're there for you. Nice. All right. So speaking of attention to detail and overcoming obstacles to bring on this hair, let's take a trip to what was called the most difficult scare zone ever, and it's now one of the most popular. Carnival. Any Carnival fans? Anybody worried there's a clown under their chair right now? <laughs> Gus, run tell us about clowns? Y yeah. Um, you know, there is the challenge. How do you make a bright scare zone, uh, a bright street zone scary? And I mean, clowns, guys. Clowns, right? <laughs> Can we ever say, find me any clown on the planet? that's not creepy <laughs> and like there's always that clown that like everybody's like oh so yeah i mean clowns are just kind of awful intrinsically but ours are the worst of the worst so that's how we make that happen any clowns out there anybody from boardwalk there's like that one guy <laughs> we're very proud of you well, congratulations on being called creepy sir <laughs> keep it up we want the best he spends uh, all night running from guest to guest i'm the only one here yeah, so, you know, it's clowns. Uh, you, you don't really know. They're, they have such a different scare technique out there. It's, it's really, they're, they've got that weird look in their eye, or they're laughing, and you're not really sure if they're laughing with you or because of what they want to do to you, right? And there's, uh, they, they're always smiling, and you don't trust anyone that's always smiling, because you just don't know what they're smiling about. And you right. probably don't want to know no, what you don't clowns know. are smiling about. So they're out in the boardwalk at Carnival, and we have a brand new roller coaster we opened. Did anybody ride hang time yet? 
So this year, the Carnival area has opened up. There's no, no construction walls. There's a giant roller coaster. And Eric, tell us how that fits into the overall theme of Carnival. Yeah, so if you've uh, come to the park this summer or you've seen the media event that we had, uh, we, we love hang time. And uh, that's because at night, if you haven't seen it at night, we have this beautiful LED lighting package that's part of that coaster. And uh, you put a giant lighting package in front of an entertainment team, and guess what they're going to do? They're going to tap into it. So uh, our lighting designers are having a lot of fun with that right now. Uh, hang time will look uh, completely different for Scary Farm. Uh, and we're also looking at creating these moments that happen throughout the night. So there are these timed moments where it's sound effects and music all timed with that beautiful LED package. Um, and, you know, speaking of lights, uh, you know, we're, we kind of... We've been playing with the idea of lights uh, for the last uh, couple of seasons, and uh, you know, obviously, we want uh, lighting is an important part of Not Scary Farm. But the absence of lighting can be just as strong. And last year, we leaned into coasters in the dark, the coasters in the dark, like uh, Silver Bullet or Ghost Rider, where you had the lights turned completely off. And uh, I'll just say, in 2018, we're looking at uh, carrying that on even further. So more on that. Nice. So, Ken and Tim, we want to talk about uh, the Carnival characters and uh, tying the area together. With, there's, a, there's, a, there's a maze over there that actually it, it exists in the Carnival world. Yeah, so we started looking at the idea of, hey, what if you took the scare zones and you made them sort of this living, inhabited land so that the maze matches the scare zone and that they together work together to tell a story. So we did it in two areas last year. We used the hollow and then we also did it in Carnival. So we have Dark Ride, which, uh, and I, I like the idea that... So I like the idea that you can get into the story either by going to the maze or going to the scare zone and vice versa. And uh, we're going to continue on that, uh, on that path. All right, and then uh, Tim, you're talking about freshening up some of the costumes. Yeah, we looked at um, Boardwalk. When Boardwalk first started and the clowns were out there, for me as a customer, I had a huge challenge because I had these huge roller coasters to compete against. They were bright colored, and for me, I couldn't compete. There was no way I'm going to compete with that coaster. So what we did is we took a look at how we can change the color to be a point. So we put everything in sepia tones. The only color that you see out there is red. That's the pop. So no matter what clown you see, they have some form of red. So this year we went back and it needed some love. So we're freshening up our clowns and making them a fresh new look. So they'll be out there looking for them. Uh, you'll find all the red tones are still out there, but just a nice, clean, fresh clown to scare you. <laughs> <laughs> That's important. Always. <laughs> all right, so that was Carnival. Now let's talk about something new called Awaken the Dead in Fiesta Plaza, Fiesta Village. We're going back to a dance party in Fiesta Village. So it's an all-night dance party, not a scare zone. And uh, Eric, you want to tell us a little bit about Awaken the Dead? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, the last few seasons we've had a scare zone in Fiesta Village with Fiesta de los Muertos. Muertos? Uh, I knew I was going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, and, you know, really, uh, we like the scare zone. There's some great uh, characters out there, but they really can't compete with the juggernauts like Ghost Town and Carnival. Uh, and then across the park over at Calico Mine Stage, last season we tried having a DJ out there. And ultimately we felt like the hanging stage wasn't the right place to put that DJ, but we definitely needed some sort of all night dance party. And that's kind of where Awaken the Dead came, uh, came to be. So we decided to move that DJ back over to Fiesta Village and really lean in heavily on the idea of having a dance party. So look for a brand new uh, produced uh, dance party out there. All right, Gus, you want to expand on that? A little bit, yeah. I mean, we all know Dia de los Muertos is a celebration of the dead. So why would we not have the dead celebrate, right? Right? It yeah, makes sense. Naturally. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to take all of the energy of the DJ and just make that zone a living, breathing thing uh, where it is fun. It's a little bit of a respite from the fog, but you're still in the mood and you get a little bit... People want, people like the DJ, people want to go have fun, and we give them an opportunity to maybe not be scared for a minute, have a good time, but still be in an immersive environment. And with this uh, freshening up and going back to this, we're actually able to bring a couple uh, cool new characters in. And, and what would those be, Tim? Well, for you guys that, who've been to clubs, we usually have a wonderful time. I'm not a great dancer, so I need something to watch and judge. <laughs> 
So we're going to create some new characters. They're going to be called um, our Sugar Skull Go-Go Dancers. Something for you guys to see and watch and enjoy the costumes up there. There's also going to be stilt walkers out there. We got some of the best stilt walkers out there in the business, and they're going to be out there on the dance floor dancing with you, so you won't be able to miss them. All right. So that's Awaken the Dead at Fiesta Village. And uh, this is just one of the new shows that we are bringing back to the park. Ken, you want to tell us about that? Uh, one of the things that I've always loved is the, uh, the entertainment that is created just for uh, Not Scary Farm. In the past couple of years, we've gotten away from uh, having a, what I would call a full lineup uh, of, uh, of shows. Uh, so this year, I've tasked the team to, let's head back in that direction. So um, we're bringing back... Uh, shows back into the park as well. So not only will we have these, you know, uh, fantastic mazes that are rich in detail, will we have these uh, uh, these uh, areas that you can go to a dance party, you'll also have an opportunity to uh, see Halloween shows created for a Halloween event. Nice. Yeah. And we talked earlier about discovery. One of the big discoveries that the guests enjoyed last year was the hollow. Yes, followed an intricate storyline where a witch hunter was trying to battle the trio of witches for control of the hollow. Uh, Daniel, you want to tell us about the hollow? Well, the overall tone of the hollow was very um, autumn-esque, haunt Halloween, carving pumpkins, uh, twisted trees dropping their leaves. Um, so we really wanted to really recreate that. And the best place for that was Camp Spooky. Uh, because of all the trees, the natural coverage of, of uh, leaves. Um, the overall story, as you mentioned, were uh, three witches uh, are trying to gain control of the zone, and a witch hunter is uh, after them, hunting them down. And one thing that we wanted to do, as Ken mentioned, was the sense of discovery. So when guests came in, they weren't exactly sure what was happening, but there was little vignettes that were, little scenes that were playing out throughout the zone that would all uh, round up to this finale of this burning wicker man. So we didn't advertise it. Uh, you're sort of lucky to stumble upon it, but that was part of the, what we wanted to achieve was to get this sense of discovery. Uh, another part of the zone that we really liked was to, um, to try to tie it in with the maze. Much like Carnival and Dark Ride, uh, the pumpkin eater and the hollows had a tie-in. So the pumpkin eater character actually is a character in the hollow zone. Yeah. Yeah. Now, uh, one of the great things I had last year was I, I monitor a lot of social media, and it was all the fans discovering the uh, hollow moments and trying to put their own timeline together. Did you see this one? Did you see it? like almost like virtual trading cards? It was awesome. Did you guys enjoy the hollow last year? That was fantastic. All right. Thank you, Daniel. All right, who's ready for something brand new for 2018? Oh, come on, are you ready for something new? Okay. We're gonna play a video.
Lake is brand new for 2018, a brand new scare zone that will culminate in everything we've learned about interactive moments and atmospheric characters. Eric, tell us about Forsaken Lake. Oh, all right. So, last year, as I mentioned with Coasters in the Dark, we had a great opportunity to turn a lot of those lights out. And Kim and I were actually walking around Mission Road uh, last year underneath Silver Bullet, and with all those lights turned off, we kind of talked to each other and said, man, this is, this is a perfect opportunity to go ahead and bring back a scare zone that hasn't been there in a long time. So that's the genesis of our Forsaken Lake came from. Uh, so yeah, it closes in the dark, and uh, that's, uh, that's where we're headed, is Mission Rome. Anybody remember the swamp where it was back in the day? Daniel, you want to continue? Yes. Um, being underneath Silver Bullet, we figured the best thing that could possibly be, the best theme that we could choose, because we're constantly looking to match the area with the theme, uh, is we see a lake and we said, well, Forsaken Lake, which is this um, New Orleans-esque uh, crypt, um, sarcophagus, fog-covered, uh, seaweed-covered, um, with roaming monsters that are all waterlogged, uh, a little bit Victorian, uh, in nature, so we, we really want to create this feeling, and we learned from the hollows that um, we want to inspire it with some interactive moments, <laughs> and uh, we want to put in this procession, like you saw in the video, this procession that would start at one end of the scare zone and go to the uh, other end. And so throughout the night, you'll see this. And it's another thing that you can not discover. We won't exactly tell you when it's going to happen, but you have to kind of discover it on your own. Yeah, the, the story or the idea is that it's a lake that there's a cemetery that has been sort of covered by this lake, and that uh, every fall the lake recedes and exposes the, the dead or the crypts. And so we will look at taking, uh, at, you know, putting atmosphere characters in that area, uh, some really interesting new looks uh, for our monsters, and then also, as Daniel was saying, that we will have these uh, zone-wide pop-up moments that kind of happen organically around the guests. Once again, we're not going to let you. We're not going to give you a list of at 12 o'clock there will be a rising of the dead and one o'clock, and we want you just to find it on your own. So I, I can't make the 115 rising of the dead. Let's reschedule for 2:30. Yeah. <laughs> uh, for me, uh, what's really awesome about Forsaken Lake is uh, obviously a new scare zone is always great, but this one it's, it's just, we have these cool throwbacks to where we've been with our history. Um, we're going back to where we were with the swamp because that was a really fun scare zone there. And uh, with the swamp, you did have some set pieces out there, so we're going to play a little bit more with having a little bit of set pieces and enhancing a scare zone in that way. Uh, another thing that to me is a cool throwback is with the procession that is going on in Forsaken Lake. It's very, very much pays homage to what we did in the Gauntlet with the Death March. So that we're there's that one guy who's like, yes, I kind of like that, but he's a clown, so he doesn't care. Yeah, <laughs> so, but uh, you know, we're looking back at things we've done and. You know, being able to treat them with the respect, but also refreshing them in a really cool, new, exciting way with uh, all of the, the wonderful new things that are at our disposal. And this really has some fantastic new looks from Mr. Barham here. Well, my team and I, we're, uh, we're a small team. Let me give you some insight. There's only 26 of us, and we're responsible for every costume out there. So I am so blessed to have such a strong team. <laughs> When this team here approached us and said we're doing a new zone, we were all like, ugh, we're doing a new zone. Because we knew the work in, was going to come into it. But then we got to it and we went, oh my god, we're doing a new zone. We get to bring so much to this table. We started researching on New Orleans jazz funerals and found that they were really bright and they were kind of upbeat and we were looking for something much darker and a little more spooky, obviously. So if you look, I threw up some designs for you to just kind of give you some flavor of what we're doing in the zone. It's a goth feel. Um, if you see, there are two wonderful characters up there. They're called the Grievers. Um, obviously, with death comes somebody who's very left, uh, who's been left here and has to process that. So you're going to hear lots of screams and wells. If you look at the other two, they are from the area around there, which are like grave diggers and undertakers, and we're going to have pallbearers and footmen. So we're really going after all those people who work in and around a funeral home. One of the other things that was really important to me as a costume designer was to pay homage to the missions that were there. So we really had to set um, a strong character that's going to represent all of that, which is the monks. 
Uh, the other thing that was really also important was color palette. Um, when we started doing our research, we started looking at lakes and what they looked like at night. And one of the things that really jumped out was the silvers, blues, and greens. If you look here, these are two of the characters in there. They're called the Reapers. Um, they are the head characters throughout the area. They are our angels of death. So for me, I was looking to try to make sure that if, from a distance, you really wanted to approach, you wanted to get close, and you want to see what that was offering, and then when you get too close, they reap your soul. Oops. For free. For free. <laughs> nice. That is Forsaken Lake, everybody. Stick around after the panel ends. We're going to play the video one more time for everybody. So, hey, thanks for everybody on the panel for coming out. Thank you. Thank you. The greatest fans in the world. We have Ken Parks, Eric Fix, Gus Kroger, Daniel Miller, Tim Barham. Be sure and stop by our booth on the show floor. It is inspired by Forsaken Lakes. You can take your picture and get a jump start on that. There's an exclusive pin for only $7. And we have staff on site to hire you if you want to be a monster. The last open hire for Not Scary Farm if you want to be a monster is Monday the 30th. Tickets and Scary Farm passes are on sale at knots.com. Get a pass and come visit us every single night. And if you have a Knott's Berry Farm season pass or a Knott's Scary Farm season pass, you can come to our announcement event on August 30th where we will reveal the entire lineup. Including new mazes for 2018. I am Jeff Tucker, and I'll see you in the fog.